Hey, you probably noticed that QNAP recently released 32X series, that's 4 bay and 6 bay. A couple of weeks ago, there was a news post where we talked about uh, it being released in Taiwan. Now it's also available in America. So let's dig deeper. What is this all about? Also, if you want to follow up and uh, find out when it's available in UK, uh, go to our live products page and you'll see a green dot next to UK tally. That's when UK has these ones in stock. As you can see, they're using the old B series, 53B series uh, chassis. So they have a four bay and a six bay available. They use Amazon budget series uh, CPU, which is more power efficient, but it's not as powerful as uh, Celeron, for example, or even Atom. Nevertheless, they have four cores, two gigahertz. So there's one memory slot, you can remove that and put in ECC memory. If you want more reliability on your NAS system, for example, if you run websites, for example, or virtual uh, dockers, virtual machines are not available on this NAS, so dockers, for example, you also get PCIe slot where you can install M.2 cards if you need a cache, or if you want extra LAN ports, for example, or any other card which is on compatibility list. It comes with 10 gigabit uh, optical SFP plus connection. It's not RJ45, which you used to see, so you need a different switch for this NAS. It also comes with USB 3 port, but it's not 10 gigabit speed, it's five gigabit speed, something to do with this weak CPU. And it comes with two 2.5 gigabit LAN ports, which is also good. So the CPU inside is from Amazon, it's called Alpine AL524. This CPU also allows encryption, so the encryption engine is built in, so it doesn't, it's not going to slow down your NAS if you want encrypted shared folders, for example. So the maximum speed what QNAP have uh, achieved in their tests is uh, 590 megabytes a second on 2.5 gig ports, two ports aggregated together, and uh, 1181 megabytes a second on a single 10 gigabit port. But bear in mind, these tests are done with SSDs inside. They were only highlighting 30 second ramp up time and the test was three minutes long. So do not actually trust that you will achieve these speeds, especially if you use hard drives. You're looking at something probably more like 300, maybe 400 megabytes a second. If you're lucky with hard drives, with SSDs in real time situation, you may get five gigabit speeds, but uh, I would doubt that you would see somewhere around 10 gigabit, as you can see in these tests. So on the six, uh, six bay NAS, the speeds they achieved is um, again 590 megabytes a second, and combined two 10 gigabit ports with SSDs in there. Again, for a three minute test, they achieved maximum dual 10 gigabit speed, which is 2,251 megabytes a second. And again, very unlikely with this sort of CPU you will get these speeds, so don't trust them too much. It's more like uh, 1000 megabytes a second, if you're lucky. So as I mentioned, you can add QM2 card, which will add two uh, 2.5 gigabit ports, so you'll have two extra, and it also includes M.2 on this card, so if you want caching, you can do that actually using this card. Obviously, the speed will be limited based on PCIe line, which was Gen3 X4, and all that will be shared across the LAN and these SSDs, so bear that in mind. You can also install QM2 card, which is two M.2 SSDs only. This is a cheaper card, but it gives you only the caching or storage over NVMe. If you want RJ45, you can install this uh, QXG 10G 2T card. It gives you two LAN ports, which you can connect to your normal switch, regular switch, if you don't have SFP type of switch. So what this NAS is for, is for simple backups, file storage, maybe source surveillance. If you are a video editor, you could have a single video editor, maybe two video editors, that's about it. Do not have too big of expectations from this NAS. So you'll obviously get other features as well, like um, snapshots, version control, and things like that. You don't need much of uh, performance to achieve these tasks. And of course, you can have your QSync in place and run your automated backups to the cloud or other uh, network devices in your uh, environment. So QNAP also highlights that this is for video surveillance, which I would actually agree. This is a backup NAS, surveillance NAS, file storage NAS. This is about it, but very fast. So if you need some really fast backup, this would be a really great solution. So there is no virtual machines allowed on this type of uh, CPU, it's a very weak CPU, but luckily you can install Docker, which is 
something similar to virtual machines but a limited version with little containers you can install little apps in a way you can install and run your semi-virtualization setup if you want to use this nas for multimedia you can use that for local network no transcoding if you want to transcode you will need to use cpu power raw power that will be limiting the performance up to 1080p our video conversion no 4k if you have 4k tv in home you don't need to worry about transcoding you can stream all those 4ks just fine but if you want to transcode access these videos 4k videos outside the home 1080p is the limit so these are the cards which are supported qm2 combo cards with nvmes or these additional lan ports so let's move on to the spec sheet so this is how 4 bay unit looks when you look at the back you have two 2.5 gigabit ports, USB 3 port, and single 10 gigabit SFP port. A 6 bay is very similar, but you get additional uh, 10 gigabit SFP plus port. And uh, also worth mentioning, this is hot swap uh, based NAS, which means you can slide these bays out whenever a drive fails and you can replace the drive. Or if you want to increase the storage capacity, you can replace a uh, couple of drives or all of the drives one at a time. Uh, and therefore you can increase the overall storage space. So as I said before, it comes with Amazon CPU, 64-bit ARM-based uh, CPU with two gigahertz per core, and you get four cores. The built-in memory is four gigabytes uh, DDR4. You can remove this memory and replace it with a um, bigger chip, like up to 16 gigabytes. And you can also use ECC memory, which is error correction technology. So you can use six hard drives, or in those bays, you can also use 2.5 inch uh, SSDs if you wanted to. So it comes with two 2.5 gigs, two SFP plus ports. It supports Wake on LAN. So whenever your NAS is off and you want to start it remotely, you can do that. And the PCIe slot is limited to Gen 3 X4 speeds. So bear that in mind. And USB ports, there are only two, one the front, one the back. USB 3, 5 gigabit speed. You still get the auto copy button at the front, which is also handy if you want automated backups to a certain external drive. You can just push the button and it does the task. So the power supply with a 6 bay is 120 watts and a 4 bay has 90 watt power supply. This is enough to power four drives. Normally you need around 10 watts per drive. This is all the power you would ever need. So let's move on to compatibility. As I said, all of those cards are supported, adding extra SFP ports, adding M.2 NVMe SSDs in your system for caching or storage, and uh, other cards like 2.5 or 5 gigabit cards. All of these cards are supported. So if you look at the hard drives, the maximum capacity you can install in these NAS is 24 terabytes. These are Ultrastar Enterprise drives that you can put in there. So these are all of the drives that are supported. Enterprise drives, MG, that's Toshiba's, Seagate, Exos drives, other Seagate, Exos. So mainly enterprise type of drives. But remember, as long as the SATA type of the drive, it will work with this NAS because it's based on SATA. Make sure that it's not SAS drive, which is not gonna work with this NAS. If you don't find those drives you want to put in there on this list, you know, probably haven't tested them yet, but if it's SATA, it will work. So if you want to compare these two NASes, the only difference is a four bay or six bay. So based on your storage needs, you can put either four or six drives, or you can connect expansion unit and have even more drives if you wanted to. The only difference is this one 10 gigabit SFP plus port, which you get extra on this six bay. If you want more detailed uh, comparison, you can go to NAS Compare's um, comparison uh, tool, and then you'll see how do they compare. So you can see that both NASes will support Plex locally. You can also run backup uh, features like backing up your Google office. You can also have artificial intelligence to recognize faces and objects. You can do a little bit of 4K editing if you wanted to. Dockers are supported and you can have your expansion unit connected if you wanted to. This is the spec if you want to use it for Docker. Uh, the performance score is not very high. You are, you'll very likely need more RAM if you want to run some Docker containers. There's no graphics uh, chip built in, so only local streaming. The max storage you can get is 132 terabytes or 88 terabytes on the four bay unit. The supported file system is ext 4 and if you do use it for video editing, the 4Bay has one 10 gigabit port and 6Bay has two, or you can install 
a card which has RJ45 port if you wanted to. Okay, let's have a look where this NAS actually sits in the overall performance list. So 4Bay is uh, more powerful than the pre previous 31X3 series. You can see that benchmark is around 1000 mark. There is no proper test yet done, but it is somewhere 1000, maybe up to 1500. That makes it sit somewhere in the performance tally around 31X series Acer Store AS1104 or even Snorgy DS423, so very weak NAS. If you want something more serious, you'll need to look at Celeron based solutions like DS462, DS423, and so on. The same with the 6 bay. This NAS actually compares with their other AI based NAS, which is TSAI642, very similar performance but slightly faster. If you want to find out what the price is going to be and when it's available or get alerts whenever the price changes, you can do that on uh, best price page on NAS Compares, put in your email address or preferred price and you will get a notification when uh, it's available at that price point. Otherwise, if you want to see anything about new videos, new posts about these models, you will see that on this page. Whenever it becomes live, it's automatically added there. The same applies to a 6 bay unit. If you want something serious, look at the NAS models with at least Celeron built-in or more preferably Ryzen, especially if you need it for video editing or virtualization, the actual virtual machines. We are going to be working on videos and articles and if you want to be first one to find out about all the news about this, you can join our inner circle. We have private chats going on there. We usually upload their uh, content early or have uh, unique content others don't have access to. We can have discussion, you can have one-to-one -one conversations there, all with our priority. And you can also help us to shape the channel, what products we're going to review in the future, how we're going to do it, and all based on your feedback.